In this video, I'm going to take my noise distortion shader a step further by adding visual feedback into it. Now in this patch, on each step, the result of the previous distortion is used as the input of the next distortion. And this creates these crazy distortion feedback effects, which uh, creates this uh, paint cloud, uh, watercolor painting like effects, which is really cool to explore when you combine it with different parameters like the scale of distortion, the speed of distortion, the zoom of the noise function and the noise function itself. So let's begin. Here I have the exact same patch I've created in the previous video on each frame on each bank here, this image is sent to JitGLPix and the second inlet of JitGLPix receives this random 3D noise function that we have created by using three instances of JitGLPFG and the result is then sent to JitGLVideoPlane uh, in our window here so we see this distortion of our original image according to the 3D noise that we have sent. And you can see I can use different uh, basis formulas for my JGL BFG to create different effects. But now I want to make it even cooler and I want to use feedback. And in theory, feedback is relatively simple, right? So the idea is that I, uh, I have a process, I take the result of the process, and on each step I feed the, this process the result of the previous iteration of the process. So in this case, it means instead of using this same image on each frame for the distortion, after the first frame, I just take the result, uh, the resulting texture from JitGLPix. I, I instead feed that to my process, which just so happens to be JitGLPix yet again. So I might try to, for example, take the first outlet of JitGLPix and I connect that texture back into JitGLPix, but you will notice this does not work. Right, and this does not work because uh, this will obviously create some problems and Max is built so you you know, you don't <laughs> achieve these kinds of problems or you don't mess up your patch by introducing this kind of endless feedback loops. But if I want, I can try to cheat that, right? So I'm going to turn off JIT.world. For security measures, I'm going to create a JIT GL texture. And then I'm going to feed this JIT GL texture the outlet of JIT GL pick. So this texture is now loaded into JIT GL texture and then I will send it to JIT GL picks. So again, in theory, this should work so because I have my original image, then I have my JGL picks, the result is sent to JGL texture. Since this inlet is a hot inlet, the outlet immediately sends out the texture itself, which is then fed back to JGL picks, and this process triggers over and over again. And JGL picks by default takes the, uh, the latest matrix or the latest texture uh, in this inlet as the, uh, as the current one, so uh, I know that this one will be used after the first frame. However, this won't work, or if it works, it's going to be incredibly choppy. So I'm expecting an error message or, ah, oh, there we go. We do have some cool visuals here, but I'm also getting this error message. JGLPix stack overflow outlets are disabled until this message is cleared. And stack overflow here is a fancy computer speak for, uh, you're asking the computer to do way too many things uh, in a very, little amount of time and you're asking it to do this over and over and over again. So if I, uh, yeah, if I get rid of that message, uh, that things should hopefully return to normal. All right, I, I removed that JGL texture causing that massive slowdown, but that was my point, right? If you try to do it like that, you're going to have a very bad time and you're having a bad time because on each frame you are sending this out, which goes into JGL picks, which goes into JGL texture, which, go, which goes into JGL picks. And this will happen theoretically an infinite amount of times and you're still on frame one. So the next frame comes and you're asking to do, uh, you're asking the computer to do infinite amounts of things in one frame yet again. And this piles on ideally 60 times per second. But I feel like we're on the right track by doing this, by creating this JGL texture and feeding it to JGL picks. We only need to make it so that this sending is not automatic. It does not uh, happen as soon as JGL texture receives something, but it holds this information until uh, the next bank for uh, or next frame is sent out. And then I want this JGL texture to be fed into JGL picks. 
Now for this, I'm going to utilize two concepts. So the first one is this message box, right? The string form of JGLPix. If I try to interpret the outcoming texture in a message or in a list or in a pack or in any kind of those objects that don't normally deal with textures, it is going to appear like this. It's JGL texture, you something, 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 something. This is going to be a random number each time you restart your patch. And this is the name of our texture. So if I send this message to another JGL texture, it is going to look at this and say, ah, okay, I'm going to load into my texture buffer this specific JGL texture, which just happens to be the output of our JGL picks. So what I can do is I can create a ZL rig. And remember, ZL objects deal with lists, but technically this message itself is a list, right? It is two symbols, JGL textures, or first element, and then use something, 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 or second element. So I'm using this ZL reg to hold this information, right? The right, out, the right inlet of ZL reg is going to store a list, and then sending a bang message to the first inlet of ZL reg is going to output this stored message. This way I can control when things are stored and when these messages are output. So I can set up something like this. I can have the output of JGL picks uh, to ZL reg, and then I can connect the first outlet of ZL reg to JGL texture, which will then send that message to JGL picks. And ideally, this is not going to create any kind of feedback, uh, yeah, this looping feedback stack overflow kinds of problems because I'm sending this here to ZL reg, but it is going to wait for me to click on this button for this bang message to release it back into JGL picks. It is not going to happen automatically, which means I do not need this flow of bang messages. I can just create a button myself and let's try it out. So the first step, I'm sending this image, right? It is already distorted. And I know that right now this result of my first frame is in that ZL reg. So if I send a bang message, we have more and more distortion happening on each iteration. And do notice that this is different uh, than the previous distortion we have created in the previous videos. I do like this effect. It is like, uh, it's like a bunch of paint, watercolor paints being mushed together. Sometimes it resembles clouds. It is really cool. And instead of doing this, just clicking this button a bunch of times, I can use this S metro to send object and I can create the receive object of uh, this metro message. So the banks go into S metro, then R metro receive those banks and it goes into ZL reg. So now on each frame, I'm indeed using feedback transformation to distort this image by feeding it back to itself over and over again. And if I ever want to restart this process, all I have to do is to send a bank to uh, my initial picture. These effects are really cool. I, I love playing around with this. It is immediately different than uh, what we have created before. And now I'm going to start working on some parameters because now if I change the parameters, I can have different kinds of effects. For example, I can change my noise function, right? How about Perlin noise? That creates a different shape. Or uh, noise.cell creates this almost pixelated-like effect. You can try a noise.checker which again is a bit trippy like this. Uh, Fractal and FBM is my favorite, but right now you'll see that it's very staticky. We are going to get to that in a second. Or I can use distorted, which yeah, just distorts the incoming image like that. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to change this back to let's say FBM. So Fractal and FBM. And I'm going to open my JGL picks again to look at this scale parameter. If you remember what this scale parameter did was to multiply the incoming noises values uh, by a specific amount. The default is 0.1. And uh, this means that if this scale value is lower, the noise is going to have less of a distortion effect. If it is zero, the noise is not going to distort the incoming image at all. If it is more than zero, uh, you know, going higher and higher and higher, it's going to distort things even more, even more strongly. And I can play around with this. I can create a uh, message box, scale dollar sign one, floating point number box, and connect it to JIT GL picks. And when I do this, I can set it to let's say 0.001, so very little amount of distortion. And if I reset 
my shader, I can see the distortion's nature has changed, just turned into this weird watercolor painting. I can make it 0.01. It creates this awesome effect. If I make it 0.1, we are back where we started, where it becomes much more static and cloudy. Making it 1 will distort it incredibly, making it look like this uh, thundercloud. I can reset things again. It's going to continuously create these kinds of effects. Uh, if I want, I can change the scale parameter to zero and then it is not going to do anything as I've set. And this is dynamic, right? So if I slowly change this, I can make it go backwards, I can make it go forwards, I can make it go very fast, very intense, and then I can go back to my initial settings. So it might be really fun to play around with this. Another thing I can explore is uh, the speed of this distortion. Remember, we use this jit.time to uh, scroll through our noise function, right? I can create a jit.p window to visualize our noise yet again. So uh, yeah, this jit.time is controlling the speed of our noise, which uh, kind of affects this distortion. So I can also change the speed of jit.time to change the speed of my noise function. And for this, I need to use a speed message, speed dollar sign one, and then another floating point number box, and if I can, for example, stop it. Right, and if it's stopped, you can see the uh, distortion itself is a singular image, it's not moving, it's static. But I can then start changing the speed, I can increase it, and it's going to move, and I can really increase it in order to create these uh, shimmery, crazy effects. And then I can go back to one. So this is another parameter you can change to have a bit more variety in your feedback distortion. And lastly, I can uh, I can use the zoom attribute right of these GTL BFGs, but to use it efficiently, I need to customize my 3D noise function a bit more. Because right now, to make each iteration of GTL BFG different, I'm using different offsets. And to do this, I'm using uh, different random values. But if I change the zoom attribute, the offset is going to change with it, which means it's going to mess with what we are doing. So I'm going to remove this uh, pack offset, random 100 and load bank setup, and I'm going to use a different technique in order to create my uh, unique noise functions for each iteration. And let's also uh, give some space here to our friends. Okay, so right now, <clears throat> Uh, these are all the same, or, or they're all theoretically the same, and uh, they're all receiving the same amount, the same time message. Right now it's at time uh, 1366 point something, something, something. Uh, another nice way of changing this is to, let's see, to get rid of these time messages, and then I'm going to create a prepend time object for each of my JGL BFGs. They're all going to receive different time values. And this is going to be the source of our offset. This is going to be what makes each JGL BFG different. And how I'm going to make it different is I'm going to add different random numbers to each duration. So let's say the first one has plus 11, plus 11 dots, so it's a floating point number. The second one is going to be plus uh, 22, and the third one is going to be plus 33. These numbers don't mean anything. You can just, uh, as long as all of these values are different, you're going to have an offset between your messages. So I can do it like this, and this should result, result in the exact same image, and also the exact same noise function. Yep, see, it's, uh, it's this rainbow colored mesh, which means that all of these JIT GLBFGs have a different kind of offset to them. And now that I'm using this technique, I can also start working with the zoom factor. And I want all of my JGL BFGs to share the same zoom attribute, so I can create a message box, zoom dollar sign one, floating point box, and then I'm going to connect this to all of my JIT GL BFGs. And I've deleted that JIT.p window, but let's create it again so we can see what is visually happening. Okay, so default is 10, but now I can zoom in, I can lower the zoom value, which is going to zoom into this noise, as you can see. And what it does to our distortion shader is that the zoom, uh, the distortion itself is more general, right? If I'm zooming out, if I'm increasing the zoom amount, the distortion of each pixel becomes more unique. It's like we are distorting things based on the zoomed out image. And if I 
zoom things really out. There we go. It's uh, it seems like this very high quality distortion, right? Like we have these all these little shapes that are moving around that actually resemble clouds. So I can again start this once again. You can see it's creating this almost uh, bad eyesight. Uh, you know, like this night drive through a rainy landscape through your car. You're looking at the reflections of your light from your car kind of feeling, which is really cool. And again, we can change the values. So this is the Perlin noise. You'll notice that it's different. It has a different kind of oscillation to it. I can use a uh, Voronoi noise, which again is different. And I can zoom back in to see how it looks. And just by zooming in and out, as you can see, it does have the zooming in and out effect on the distortion itself. So that might be something you can play with. So to sum it up, we have a lot of parameters that we can utilize uh, as a part of this feedback distortion shader. We can change the scale of distortion inside our JIT GLPix shader. Uh, if you want, you can use a different kind of picture as your input that will, of course, create different kinds of results. Um, we can change the speed of our JIT.time, which will change the speed at which the distortion happens. We can change the function, the basis function. Uh, of our JITGL BFGs of our custom 3D noise, which can be interesting as well. And then finally, we can change the zoom of our instances of JITGL BFG, which again creates a nice zooming in detail, details like effect in our window. So there you go. You can do a lot of things with this. Once again, you can hook it up to something musical. You can hook it up to any kind of data. It could be movement. It could be text. It could be user input. And you can create a lot of cool shaders and visual effects using this technique. So I hope this has been useful to you and thank you for watching.